Below are the city miles per gallon for select board cars in order from least to greatest. Construct a frequency table and histogram. So when constructing a frequency table, what we're going to do is set up a number of categories and see how many numbers fall within that category. So looking at our data, the smallest number I see is 20, and the largest one I see is 30. So I think we can just go by ones. So I'm going to set up a table. So on the left side here will be the city miles per gallon. And on the right side will be the frequency. So the smallest one is 20 and the largest one is 30, so we need to lift out every number in between. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so now at this point we're just going to go through the list and see how many of each we have. So starting with 20, I got one. 21, 2 22s, 2 3s, 23s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 26s. I think I can actually mark these. 2, 3. So no 24s, no 25s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 26s, 3, 27s, 2, 28, 129, 130. Okay, so since they were in order, that made that a lot easier. So now we're going to set up the histogram, which means we're going to have a horizontal axis. That's going to represent the city miles per gallon. And now we're going to have a vertical axis that's going to represent the frequency. So for city miles per gallon, it started at 20, so I'm going to start at 20. Ended at 30. So I just made all the masters there. And then for frequency, the highest one is 5, so I'm going to go 5. Okay, so now we're just going to build out bars. So at 20 and 21, we're going to have a height of 1. At 22, we have a height of 2. 23 has a height of 3. Nothing at 24, nothing at 25. 26 has a height of 5. 27 has a height of 3. And then 2 and then one, and then one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do with the same data is do the box and whisker plot. So with the box and whisker plot, we need five things. First of all, we need the minimum number. We need Q1, Q2, Q3, and then the maximum number. Okay, so minimum and maximum are easy enough. That's just the smallest number and the largest number. So a 20 and a 30. Q2, separate the bottom 50 from top 50. So that's just the median. So what we're going to do is find the median of these numbers. So I'm just going to start on the ends and work my way in. Okay, so right at 26. That's our median. So to, to find Q1 and Q3, we're going to find the median of the left side and then the median of the right side. So since 26 is Q2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers to the left. So I'm going to find the median of these 9 numbers. So in other words, it's going to be the fifth number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So Q1 is going to be 23. Same thing on the right side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to be Q3, so 27. 
So let's see what this histogram would look like if it were written as a box and whisker plot. So the first thing we'll do is set up a number line just like we did for the city miles per gallon. So I actually, I think I want to make it the exact same length. Just trying to match it up to the histogram, so 20 and 30. Use a different color, actually. Q1 is at 23. Q2 is at 26. And then Q3 is at 27. So the box is going to take place around Q1, Q2, and Q3. And then the whiskers are on the left and the right. Okay, so let's see how this relates back to the histogram. Notice that uh, from 23 to 26, that's probably the longest part of the box and whisker plot. And you can actually see that from the histogram because there's a lot of variation between 23 and 26 because 24 and 25 weren't even there. So between 23 and 26, there's a lot of variation. So that's going to be a little bit longer. Okay, between 26 and 27, it's actually a little bit shorter because between 26 and 27 is where you have most of your data. So everything was compressed, so 25% of your data was compressed between 26 and 27. So that's why that part of the box is so small. Okay, so then the follow-up question there, describe the shape of the distribution. So if you look at the histogram, if I were to draw a curve over this, I would say that it's almost bell-shaped. The reason I'm saying almost bell-shaped is because we do have some missing parts between the 24 and the 25. So I'm going to say that it's an almost bell-shaped. So almost bell-shaped. And that's actually um, another way to say that is a normal distribution. So it's almost normal based on the shape of it. But keep in mind that it's not completely normal because we did have some missing bars.